Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Andy Gunderson with Western Marketing. Uh, it's about 10 a.m. Central Time here to get started on our Emeritus FLX IUL and Term webinar today with our host, Jeremy Farrow. Um, so I'm uh, just going to kind of wait a couple minutes. Uh, I'd like to wait till at least a minute after and um, everybody gets on there. So uh, if you hold on just a second, we'll get everything going here in no time at all. Okay, good morning everyone again. This is Andy Gunderson at Western Marketing. Uh, today we are going to have Jeremy from Emeritus and we're going to talk about the FLX IUL and term products. Um, Emeritus and Western Marketing have had a long-standing relationship. Uh, we really, really love the living benefits of the FLX product line. Uh, just a couple housekeeping notes. If you do have questions, uh, please type them in the question box uh, over there to the right of your screen, and we will answer them at the end of the presentation. Uh, again, um, we're going to get started here today, so uh, we'd like to welcome Jeremy from Emeritus. Uh, Jeremy, go ahead and take it away. Awesome. Thanks so much, Andy. Really appreciate it. Uh, let me click a few buttons here and get my stuff going. All right. I believe I am now sharing my screen. Fantastic. Good to me. All right. Sounds good. Well, hey, thanks again. Um, as, as was mentioned, my name is Jeremy Furrow. I'm one of your internal sales reps here at Emeritus. Um, I, uh, I've been with Emeritus now for about four years. It'll be four years in October. Been in and out of the financial services industry for maybe the last five or six years. Um, and uh, just really excited uh, about these products and, and uh, very excited to, to share with you uh, what makes them unique, uh, how they can fit into your specific sales model and, and your process, and, and ultimately how you can best uh, leverage Emeritus um, with your clients and, and, uh, and, and how to, to really kind of plug these in. Um, I really, I, I refer to them quite often as kind of plug and play products because they are, they are so universal um, but yet you can structure them, you know, and, and you can and you can connect some dots that you wouldn't you wouldn't think you could connect with with life insurance products. So that's that's very fun for me. Um, just a just to preface, um, I've I'm on my third cup of coffee this morning. My my uh, ten year old or ten month old got up this morning at about five fifteen. So I have been awake for some time now. And uh, so I am going to move through this pretty quick. Um, a lot of this information may be a refresher course for, for most folks, but I, I want to leave it open for questions at the end but, and, uh, and go from there. I am a little bit of a nerd when it comes to, to this stuff. So if I, if I kind of drone on, I apologize. I'm going to try to keep it light, airy, and fresh for you guys. So I'm going to start off with a little bit of a, uh, a get-to-know-each-other joke. So why can't your nose be 12 inches long? And I know you're all muted, so I'm just going to go ahead and tell you why. Well, because if it was, then it would be a foot. But um, boom. And uh, now that we're all loosey goosey, let's go ahead and jump into those products. So, uh, like Andy mentioned, we've got these two FLX Living Benefit products. Uh, there's a Living Benefit Term and a Living Benefit Index UL product, each unique in, in their own you know, respective categories. But from a Living Benefits perspective, both these products actually offer the same, um, the same triggers, the same uh, Living Benefits uh, categories and, and overall information. So both products offer a total of 18 Living Benefits triggers. Um, which is a pretty high number in the industry when it comes to those living benefit products. We know that we're not the first and we're not going to be the last to offer a living benefit product. However, 18 total triggers, that's a high number. That's, uh, you know, and you see, you see all, these, all these different options or opportunities here on the screen with heart attack, um, stroke, paralysis, blindness, organ transplant, cancer. You know, really, a lot of these are buzzwords in the industry, right? Um, and, and when it comes to, you know, your health kind of, working its way down or, you know, deteriorating, whatever, whatever word you want to use there, uh, descriptive word there, 
it, it's going to happen. And so with living benefits, it's not if this happens, it's more, more likely when will this happen? Just like, you know, when you, when you talk to clients, I'm sure they say, well, what happens if I die? Well, that's kind of a silly question because what you're going to die, right? I mean, that is the inevitability. And, uh, and these products are here and they have kept up with, with the times in order to provide uh, true life insurance. Um, so these living benefits are, are a fantastic opportunity to accelerate some of that death benefit now while they're here to be able to help kind of move past or move through some of these illnesses and some of these life events that, that, that may, they may you know, be staring down the barrel of. 15 of those 18 triggers are critical illness. Um, and then we've got the standard two out of six acts of daily living um, inability to perform or severe cognitive impairment. And then terminal illness is defined as 12 months to live or less. Now we don't have any knockout questions, nor do we have any enforced waiting periods, or excuse me, enforce, um, you know, you, you need to have the policy enforced for two years or three years or a year and a half or whatever the case may be. We don't offer that. We don't have that on these products. What we do have are, are uh, some elimination periods for just a handful of these illnesses. So as you can see here, coma, 96 hours, stroke 30 days, paralysis 90 days, and chronic illness 90 days. Um, that's it. So if you get a policy in force on a Monday, and then Friday you get the call that you have, you know, stage two cancer, well, you can turn around and, and, and go through the process to accelerate that, that living benefit because we don't have to wait a certain period of time um, for that specific illness in order to uh, start that acceleration process. So that's a pretty big deal. Um, without that waiting period, that is, that is a pretty big deal. And um, I'm sure you have, you know, in your circle or in your experience with your clients, you know, a lot of these may actually be hit, hit a little bit more closely to home than others. And so, you know, from your perspective, where you stand, where you're sitting in front of your client, you actually have a story. And that story, um, you know, surrounding living benefits can be a very impactful story. So uh, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm going to be one of those proponents uh, that, that just always says, you know, share your story. Because even if you think someone does not want to or needs to hear what you have to say, I. So that's a that's just my little two cents there, maybe even one cent. I don't even know if it's worth two cents, but that's what uh, that's what I wanted to say about that. So living benefits, it's the same on both products. And then for the FLX term, um, you know, wh how do we actually determine the amount that they can accelerate? So by definition, we've got up to 90% up to 1.5 million on the term product. On the term, we do follow the discount approach. Now, some of us or all of us may be familiar with this, but just, a, just as a reminder, the discount approach, we look at the, the client's life expectancy and their severity of illness to determine their maximum acceleration um, that is going to be available. Now we go up to 90%, not 100%, because the, that, that extra 10% at a minimum is going to be there um, in force as a death benefit. And so, you know, if your client has $100,000 in force and they're offered 90%, so they're offered $90,000, then they have 10% left in the policy, um, you know, $10,000 as a maybe a final expense, you know, burial, um, just as a death benefit. Um, for for you know moving forward and then the the premiums are reduced accordingly so um, some of the flexibility in that in that product um, is going to be the fact that you know we're offering we're going to determine a maximum number a maximum acceleration amount and your client has the opportunity to accept that full maximum number or they can take less and if they take less then they actually leave room for additional accelerations and ultimately even more death benefit remaining after that acceleration does take place. Um, and so, you know, when, when I think a lot of times clients will look at the insurance industry as a very, you know, black and white hard line industry, where if the insurance company is saying something, then you have to do that. And if you don't do that thing, then, you know, it, it, it's unknown the, the outcome um, of what's gonna, what's gonna proceed after you say no to, to the big machine, right? Um, but the flexibility is that they have the choice, they have the option, they have the opportunity to take less, only they know their situation. Um, they know it best, they know where their health, health insurance is coming into play, they know how much money they have set aside for a rainy day, and they know, um, you know, they, they're looking at the bills that they're getting from the doctors. And so they know how much that they're going to need or what's going to be more comfortable for them. Um, the second piece to that flexibility is that, you know, with any acceleration from a living benefit, it doesn't necessarily need to go toward medical bills. We don't ask for receipts. 
And so if your client wants to, you know, pay down some debt so that the, their, their beneficiaries and their loved ones that, that they leave behind don't have as much stress, then they can do that. If they want to take their family on a trip, they can do that. If they want to, you know, try to try to fight this thing, they can do that. It's totally up to them. And that flexibility piece is, is built into the name FLX, short for flex, right? Flexible. Um, so that is, that is a big piece to that puzzle. So the discount approach is what we follow on the term product. On the IUL, we, it's the flip side. So on the IUL, we follow the lean approach. So with the lean approach, we offer pre-identified preset percentages for the critical, chronic, and terminal illness categories. So it's 25% for critical, 50% for chronic, and 75% for terminal. So again, going back to that example of $100,000 in force, if you have a heart attack, and, you know, it doesn't matter if it's mild, you know, uh, moderate, or severe. If it's a heart attack, it's going to fall into that critical illness category, which means they're going to be offered a, a maximum of 25% of that $100,000, which in this case would be $25,000, right? Now, uh, the difference here between the, di the discount approach and the lean approach is that with the lean, it's a dollar for dollar reduction of that face amount. And so if they accelerate 25% or 25,000 in this case, then immediately following that acceleration, they have 75,000 left in force. Now this is a pretty big deal because if you look at a lot, of the, a lot of the carriers and a lot of the products on the marketplace, in the marketplace today, they may actually follow the discount method on their permanent products, on their IUL or on their whole life or any of their permanent products. And they may actually be able to accelerate 90%, maybe even up to 100% of that death benefit, which is great. Don't get me wrong, there is definitely a need for that and folks are gonna be really turned on to that. Um, but for when it comes to the lean approach, when you think through an IUL product, an IUL product is death benefit with that cash accumulation component to it, right? So it's kind of a, a life insurance investment all rolled into one, a, a life investment, right? Um, but a lot of times people are gonna look at IUL products to overfund and to really build that cash, to be able to have access to that cash later in life, whether it be as a supplemental or a full retirement income, education funding, um, you know, gifting for maybe your, your kids want to buy their first house or something like that. And you want to kind of be your own banker in a sense. Um, so these products are, are, are great vehicles for building cash. But if you, if you end up with a product that you, that you are offered an acceleration of 90% or 100% of that death benefit, what happens to the policy after you take that 90 or 100%? Well, the policy's done, right? There's nothing left. Your cash accumulation, everything that you've been working for for X number of years is no longer there because you accelerated everything you can. And in order for this to meet the definition of life insurance, it has to have a death benefit left. Um, and in most cases, if they accelerate 90%, there's still 10% left, which is great. But what, what about all that cash value? Is that cash value still there? Well, probably not. In most cases, it's not because they, they can't keep the death benefit or, or have the death benefit be so far reduced and still have you know a good amount of cash value and still maintain the non mix status for any tax redistributions. A lot of times that gets surrendered to the insurance company. And so it's, it's a big deal when you think about the lean approach versus the discount method that's out there on these permanent products. Um, because in this case, you're not having to sacrifice that cash value. You're not having to make a very difficult decision between do I keep my policy moving and enforce or do I, do I just take it all and just kind of be done with it. Do I walk? And so 25, 50 or 75%. So by definition on the product, we can accelerate up to 75% of the, of the policy up to $1 million. Now each category does have a maximum dollar amount. The, the, the critical illness is 25% up to 250,000. And then for chronic and terminal, it's 50 or 75% up to a million dollars. And so once we reach that limit, then basically the living benefits are shut down and, uh, and then they're, they're just working toward, um, you know, building up uh, that cash value if they continue to overfund and, you know, continue to kind of move through life as though nothing happened. And, uh, and so what does that actually mean? So from, from a lean approach, I know we've been throwing some numbers out there and a lot of times it's, it's, it's very difficult to, to really picture that. So here's a quick little uh, chart, if you will. So if you've got a million dollars in force, you know you've got 25, 50, and 75% for those critical and chronic and terminal illness uh, acceleration categories. But what happens when you need to accelerate? Because if you accelerate from one, can you accelerate from another? The answer is yes. So in this example, this, this individual 
got their policy issued, and then five years in, they ended up accelerating for a critical illness. They took the maximum acceleration, which in this example is $250,000. So immediately following that acceleration, they had 750,000 left in force. So still not a small number, not a million, but not a small number because they just took a quarter of a million dollars to be able to help out with medical bills for that critical illness. Then five years later, they're struck with a chronic illness and so they, they look at their policy and say, well, what can I take out of it now? Well, a subsequent acceleration dollar amount is determined by what was available at the time of the initial acceleration, which is a, which is a very fancy and, and you know, a wordy way of, of basically saying, when you accelerated the first time, that death benefit is setting the stage for any additional or optional accelerations down the road. And so at the time you accelerated for that, that critical illness, that first acceleration, you had a million dollars in force. So that million dollars is what's setting the stage for the chronic illness that's taking place 10 years into the policy after they've already accelerated that critical illness. So in year 10, when they need to accelerate for critical illness, they're still going to be able to accelerate 50% of a million dollars up, in this case, 500,000, right? So at this point, they have accelerated $750,000 from their million dollar policy, which is 75%, which means they have maxed out their accelerations on this policy um, over the course of 10 years, which how many products on the market right now, how many, how many carriers can you, can you actually point a client to and, and say, you're going to be able to do this in, the, in five years, you're going to be able to do this in 10 years and you're still gonna have $250,000 thereabout of death benefit remaining. Now, when we, when we speak in terms of liens, a, a lien is synonymous with loan, right? So lien just means it's a, it's a loan against the death benefit. And so we work our illustrations, which we'll get to here in a minute, we work in net, um, uh, net numbers. And so what you'll see on, a, on an illustration, if you end up taking, you know, accelerations or if you take loans or you take withdrawals or anything like that, you work with net cash values, net death benefit, and, and then a net surrender value. And so 250000 is the net death benefit after both these categories are exhausted. Um, and, and then because we took loans against the death benefit, there is a lien interest rate that gets deducted from that remaining death benefit. And so it's, it's not necessarily a catch. Um, it's just the way it works, right? So that is something to at least keep in mind because I'm sure clients are going to ask, so if I take money out of the policy, do I just take it or, or how does it work? Like, is there any cost for it or anything like that? I mean, there's that nominal fee of $250 when you go to accelerate, um, but then the lien death or the lien um, interest rate, it just, again, gets deducted from that remaining death benefit. So year over year, your death benefit does drop by that lien interest rate. Um, now, the, the nice thing about a loan is, is what? You can pay it back. And so you're, by no means is a client ever required to pay back an acceleration. But if the goal is, was originally to have a, a million dollars in force and the client wants to get back to that for their heirs, then they have the opportunity to pay back that, that, that loan, that, that acceleration. And so they would pay back the principal, the 250 or 500 or whatever it is that they, they, they took out, plus the lien interest rate. Um, uh, lien interest value in order to make their policy whole again. And so, again, when you talk about flexibility, when you think about flexibility, there is a lot of moving parts to this. There is a lot of opportunity to really make this, um, you know, frame um, a lot of your client base, a lot of your clientele to be able to say, you know, I've got a Sally up the road that is just terrified that she's not going to be able to afford medical expenses, you know, in 10 years or 20 years. So we've got living benefits, fantastic. And then we've got a Joe, um, you know, at my at my wife's job or at my husband's job that um, that has mentioned, you know, I I I've maxed out my IRA, I've maxed out my 401k, I've maxed out all of my available options for retirement, and I still want to put money away. So what's a good what's a good option here? Well, this is an accumulation focused product, and so this is going to be a great option for something like that as well. And and to to kind of drive that home. Um, we, we do offer on this product with that accumulation focus, we have a proprietary index option called the BNP Paribas Momentum 5, um, here to refer to as just the BNP index, because um, we, uh, 
we, we are the only IUL in the market that is offering the BNP index. You may be familiar with the name or with the index itself from some Athene annuities, um, because the index has been around for longer than our product's been around. Um, but we are the first on the market to offer this index to follow. This index is uncapped with a participation rate of 185% for the one-year point-to-point and a 250% par rate for the two-year point-to-point. I'm going to take a second just to let that sink in, because if you think about um, the marketplace, if you think about investments, if you think about returns and the volatility and, and really how the market can be, I mean, look at last year. Last year, the market dropped um, you know, pretty quickly. And, and yes, it, it, is, it is coming back, and it did come back toward the end of the year, but ultimately, the, the market is, is volatile. With this index, this is a volatility-managed index. So if you look at, you know, like the S&P 500, that's, that's, uh, I'm going to refer to that as a, a Ron Popeil um, index, where it's a set it and forget it, right? So it's you, you, put it, put it on, you turn it on at the beginning of the year, and then you don't worry about it. You don't come back to it. You don't, you don't fiddle with it until um, the beginning of the following year, right? With the BNP index, there's a team in place at, the, at, at BNP that is monitoring the index and the individual components make up building the index on a daily basis. So they have a daily volatility limit that they, that they will not supersede or exceed. Um, and so if a component, multiple components are, are, are underperforming and they, you know, they're on track to, to exceed that daily volatility limit, they'll reallocate and reweight and they will shift some things around just to make sure that they are staying within the guidelines of, of where they feel comfortable. So what does this mean for your client? Well, well, you know, right off the cuff, we've got nothing but upside potential. This product has a 0% floor, so they've got downside protection. They never lose anything, right? They, 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 they just, ne there may be a few years or a year or two or something, you know, to that effect where they don't gain anything, which is not a bad, bad thing because if you think about the market, if you put all of this money that they're putting in an IUL into, directly into the market, you are risking that money, right? You are risking the ups, you're risking the downs. You don't know exactly, you know, is it time to sell? Is it time to, is it time to buy more? You, you know, if you live in that space, fantastic. I am by no means knocking on, on the door of those folks and saying that they're doing anything wrong, but there are going to be people in the marketplace, um, your clients that you're going to come across, maybe you already have right now, that are terrified of the ups and downs of the market. They, they are risk intolerant, right? And so they want to make sure that they have the opportunity to put something in a, in a, in a chassis in a vehicle that is safe um, or that at least has that 0% floor where they can't lose anything. They can't lose principal. Um, and so if you look at the, the BNP index, which BNP has a fantastic client-friendly website. I've got it listed here. You can go there anytime, um, share that with your clients, point your clients to that if they want to kind of familiarize yourself, themselves with the product or with the index anyway. Um, they, they walk through their process. They have a performance chart. And so what you'll see with that performance chart is the ups and downs are there, right? This is not immune to the market, but those ups and downs are quite a bit more gradual than the steep peaks and valleys of like the S&P, the Russell 2000, the MSCI FE, anything, anything that maybe that folks are a little bit more comfortable or familiar with from a name perspective. Um, and so this is a long-term play. This is not a short-term gain solution for someone who says, I've got $10,000, I need to turn that into $20,000 in the next year. This is not for them. But what this is for is for people who are on a long-term strategy approach and they are, they are willing to set it out or, or, or wait it out for the next 20, 25, 30 years. This is great for juveniles. This is great for kids. Um, this is fantastic um, for, for folks that are, are looking at that long-term solution. Um, because again, the participation rates are high. It's uncapped. So if the index returns 10% and you're in the one year, well, that one year is actually going to merit you 18.5%. Those numbers, you don't see those numbers uh, very often it, when it comes to investments. I'm droning on. I, like I said, I geek out over this stuff. If you want to have a conversation offline, I'm more than happy to do that. But we're just going to burn through the rest of this here real quick to, to get to any questions. Um, so what's unique about the term, aside from it being a full living benefit term, um, we offer a same payer discount on the term. 
which basically says if you've got two or more FLX policies that are being paid for by the same checking account, then the policy fees for the term products will be reduced in half. So this can be a combination of husband and wife, husband's getting a term, wife's getting an IUL. The husband is getting going to get that same payer discount because he's got a term and they've got both of those products paid for by the same checking account. Um, works great for families, companion applications, all those kind of things. This is a great opportunity just to save a, a little bit more, just to kind of put that and one, that value add um, on, on, the, uh, on the envelope for these folks. When it comes to underwriting, um, we underwrite these products uh, the same way uh, in terms of we have three different underwriting options or opportunities um, for the products. Um, and this is both for the living benefit term and the living benefit IUL. So uh, the first one, which you may be familiar with, is our, our true non-med. This is for clients that are 70 or younger applying for 300000 or less of coverage. We can go up to a preferred non-tobacco, um, but this is a simplified issue opportunity. This is not a quick issue. This is not, you know, put the application in at 10 o'clock on a Monday, um, you know, approval by 2 o'clock in the afternoon, um, policy and paid on, on Tuesday morning. Um, this is a simplified issue, meaning we're going to take the application and then we're going to run some internal reports and then we're going to underwrite it. There is there's limited underwriting, but there's underwriting to it because we take a best offer underwriting approach. So if you apply it standard and they meet the criteria for preferred, we're going to offer preferred and vice versa. And then because we know not everyone's perfectly healthy, we do have this rapid class built into this, this non-med option, which is going to include four tables. So up to table D is in David. So if your client is, you know, maybe they're, they're diabetic or maybe they are, are, their build is a little bit off or, or, you know, they've got a history of cancer or something like that, there, there may be an opportunity to still get them a full living benefit product. It may cost a little bit more because of their, their situation, right? Because um, clients going into life insurance typically have a very good idea of their personal situation and their, their health picture. Um, and they know that, that they're, they're probably going to be paying for um, for, for waiting, right? For waiting until now to, to look at life insurance. Um, the next option is our, uh, we refer to as Flexcelerate. That is fancy, um, that is French for uh, accelerated underwriting. <laughs> um, so this is for anything over 300,000 up to a million. Um, so this is, I, I, I look at this as a 50-50 shot at going non-med and still being able to possibly get that million dollar policy. Um, so the, the criteria for the Flexcelerate program um, is laid out. We have a flyer that, uh, that is out on producer workbench. I can send out after this. It lays out all of the criteria. Now, when you look at our, these three options, you, you'll notice non-med is, is in, on the one side, Flexcelerate's in the middle, full underwriting on the end. Full underwriting, I'm not going to get into too much because you should all be familiar with full underwriting. But it's the, the Flexcelerate is straddled by a simplified issue where we're getting a very minimal picture of the client and full underwriting where we're getting the full picture, right? The, the most information we can get about that client to be able to determine the best option that we have available for him. Flexcelerate smack dab in the middle. And so Flexcelerate has a, um, a little bit more of a stringent set of criteria and, um, and the wiggle room is not as great for the Flexcelerate program because we have more at risk on the line, right? Up to a million dollars, but we're essentially getting the same amount of information that we would on that non-med. And so just that application, the internal reports, if we can make an offer based on that information, we will. But again, those, those guidelines are quite a bit more narrow. Um, and so, you know, 50-50 shot to be able to say, yes, we can make an offer or not, no, we can't. We're going to go ahead and order that paramed for you. Um, so that's, that's one of two ways or one of two options to, to be able to get that set up for you. And then um, last but not least, we have ways to get a hold of us. Um, I, for, for most of you, if you've worked with us in the past, when you call into our sales team, you may hear, you know, hey, this is Jeremy, sales development. How can I help you win today? Um, and I know it sounds cheesy. It may sound cliche, um, but, but that is truly our motto. Um, we, we are here to support you. Um, and so when you call in, we have no reason not to help you out. Um, we, we are a I like to refer to us as we're, we're small enough to, ma uh, excuse me, we're big enough to matter, but we're small enough to care um, in that our sales team is actually four people. Um, so you get to know us pretty well. We get to know you. Um, and, and we like it that way. We build those relationships and we want to build those relationships so that we can, so that we can, we can stick this thing out, you know, so that we can move forward together. 
um, ways to get a hold of me, my sales team, and then um, we've got that quote um, inbox, that uh, shared inbox that our whole sales team has access to, idc.quotes at emeritus.com. Um, I ran a little bit long, but I do want to leave it open for a few questions. Um, Jeremy, uh, you did a great job, buddy. We don't have any questions. Uh, no but, questions. Uh, if anyone, yeah, yeah. I think so I can if, retire. Uh, any, yeah, right, right. So if anyone does have questions, uh, Jeremy's information is up there, um, as well as contacting Western Marketing. Uh, our number here is 800-852-7152. So uh, with that, I'd like to thank everybody for their time today, and thank you, Jeremy, for presenting. Uh, good job, as always. Uh, again, everybody have a great day and a happy Easter, and uh, contact Western Marketing with any questions. Thank you. Sounds great. Thanks, guys.